Hello guys, it's finally good to be back. Um, I've been sick for five days now, so I'm not at 100%, but you know, I'm well enough to where I can actually get out of bed and make a video now. So um, this, I feel like this video is important. This is a Lunar Light Time Thief. Um, this is a montage of different combos for situations. I'll go ahead and reveal that in a sec, but um, for those of you who, wa who n research anything regarding Time Thief Lunalite, if eventually may have ran into Sir Eminon's channel, I uh, highly recommend you go check him out. He is uh, pretty well informed when it comes to Lunalite and combos in general. But I also want Sir Eminon to watch this video as well because I believe this is pretty important uh, for anyone who wants to play Lunalite. So first off, uh, why would we decide to play Lunalite in the first place? Well. It doesn't lose to hand traps like Spiral does, and this is what this video is all about. Where you're going, I'm going to demonstrate how to basically play through any and every hand trap in the game that is being played. So uh, the reason f for this is quite simple, but um, we'll go at it. The combos make it more apparent and all that. So you know, for those of you who saw my uh, replay, I have another one. But, you know, I had an Orcus package in it and all that. And it's good and all, but um, as I kept going, I realized if I didn't open this and I opened any other Orcus card, my hand just clogged. And so I always had just dead cards. But I played it for the counter trap so I could actually have a negate. Uh, because Lunalite does have an inherent weakness to... A certain certain kind of cards that I'll kind of clear at the end of the video now this is going to be kind of a more lengthier video than what I normally make because I believe this is very important again we're going to open up different hands and we're going to just basically play them out assuming these are in hand or not just assuming they're in hand but just trying to basically what are you trying to do to play around these cards so there's that so I took out the Orcus cards so it's like five cards in the main, and I put in what a foolish barrel and a monster reborn, and I originally put in these three. You know they're pretty good. They actually do something if they are in your hand. They get discarded and they get you a level four dark extender. But um, I find it uh, I find that these are very vulnerable to cards like Droll and Lockbird. So I often opted to take these out for Luna, the Dark Spirits instead, and they work pretty nicely. Um, they don't worry about Joel and Lockbird too much and you know it doesn't save the hassle plus with the Phantom Knights there's with uh, your one with your two to three discard effects there's cards in hand that you want to discard more than those like your Serenade Dance and your Zephyros and things like that so um, also with these some I want to talk about um, I did play these in the deck and in theory it's nice but what the problem it's not really a problem but it's just with souls i don't see like you really want to see this when you see tanky every time i see this i don't see tanky or just and the other cards that you do see like perfume you don't want to discard you much rather activate the perfume to get yourself a free body on field rather than discard it for a draw uh, you don't see Serenade Dance in your hand enough. You don't open multiple Foolish Goods enough and all that for you to really warrant this. It's a free body. Don't get it twisted. I mean, this, it's a free body, but a lot of the times the discard is actually... Uh, sometimes the discard is actually... Uh, sometimes it's unforgiving. But who knows? Maybe I'll add them back in at some point. But as of right now, no. So... One more important thing I want to note before we get started is what are you not seeing? You're not seeing Called by the Grave. I took that out of my deck as well. Just, I realize it's a brick. And this is weird, really weird, but the reason why um, it's a brick is because you're playing Dangerous for one. So you, you, you either discard the Call by the Grave with the danger effect and fall victim to the hand traps anyway or you know it's not even live because your opponent didn't even have the hand trap in the first place and the call by the grave isn't even a playable card in your hand 
So even if the best case were to happen, best case scenario, and you did have the call by the grave to stop a hand trap and you know it didn't get discarded with the danger and all that stuff, I feel like you could still end on the exact same result. Um, had that call by the grade just been in another card to just extend your place further. Uh, depending on what the hand trap is, is, if it's like Joel Lockberg or like Lancey or something, then yeah, it's a little bit different, but that's what this video is all about. So, um, you probably noticed, but just a lot of these cards, a lot of these choices that I've made, um, are just meant to be as flexible as humanly possible. That's what I love about Lunalite. It's so flexible and just so fluid and just if you build the deck the right way you can play through any hand trap in the game uh, for that very reason you know just these card choices that we are and aren't playing just because of the cards that are being played you know we literally just build the deck to play around hand traps and all that so and I've said this in the post in Zodiac there's no point in playing cards that everybody's playing around. And Ash is really not being played too much, but only in the decks that are playing like 9 plus hand traps. But Ash is really weak right now because it's so easy to play around. But we're going to include Ash and Valor in the same category because you're essentially negating the same cards. So we'll go ahead and start with our first hand. And we don't have Chick Tiger and all that, but uh, I'll let you in on something. Okay, so, when it comes to Ash Blossom, against a deck like Lunalite, people don't really bother ashing any cards involving Lunalite because you play so many. The Lunalite engine itself is 19 cards, 20 cards of you include Zephyros. So, if half of your 40 card deck is Lunalite cards, then Ashing anything involving Lunalites is super unsafe. So um, that's what I'm going to end up uh, basically displaying. So Ash Blossom is not going to get used on your Luna cards more times than not for that very reason. So we'll go ahead and we will send our... Um, I think I want to send Serenade Dance for a summon, but I do want Lunalite mm -hmm. Tiger. So, I, and you'll notice a lot that Serenade Dance allows you to play through a lot of hand traps. You know, and I do mean a lot. You play through a lot of hand traps because of Serenade Dance. So, with uh, Lunar Light, um, you get to uh, Perfume, you get to add Tiger, and we get to summon our chick, and we get to send Emerald Bird to the graveyard. Now, if Emerald Bird was in our uh, hand and we had a way to discard it, we would have just perfumed the Emerald Bird and sent the Martin, and we would have been in a much better position. But, hey, we don't always open those. In fact, we open Flyback, which is something we really don't want to open. But there's always going to be hands where you open something that you really don't appreciate opening all that much. So, let's uh, go ahead and Tiger for this. Now we're gonna go ahead and overlay into a Force Strix. Now this is a card that a lot of players do ash because, mm. you know, unlike Lunalites, you're only playing one Zephyros. Most of the time you don't have it. So majority of the time you try to get access to it. So denying this denies the body being Zephyros and it denies mm. you the extra effect of Lunalite Tiger. That's why that is important. So. If I sit here and I go detach for four strikes and it gets ashed, well, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, you sell Martin in the grave, you still have stuff, so let's go ahead and do it. Let's go Time Thief uh, Winder. Um, I don't think I'm going to search with Winder because I still want to attach a trap. I mean, this attaches a trap and so does uh, Perpetua, but... Hey, it's unfortunate that we open this card. We have no way to mulligan. We don't play Saryuja. You don't need it. Uh, because the deck is just that consistent. So, um, and yeah, I understand that the power ceiling of Chick Tiger isn't as high as it used to be. But, you know, it, again, it just enables you to play around so much more uh, than Spirals do. And, you know, I know Spirals can go so much further with two cards, but... It's because of uh, other variables in your hand. 
and Lunar Light that allow you to play through uh, more hand traps than Spirals can. So let's um, do I do I really want to add? No, let let's not add. We just want the body. That's all we want is the body. Um, so what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and make our uh, lambda. Where is it? There it is. All right. Now the goal here is to put two level or four level fours on the field uh, at once. You want to make both Redoer and Perpetua in one go, uh, for very very good reason. But I'll end up uh, if we don't get there, then we don't get there. Um, you know, we're not gonna always get there because hand traps are a thing. So. There we go, and we will act, go with Tiger, and we will do our uh, Tiger effect, and I think we, yeah, we normal summoned, so we will go with our Emerald Bird, alright, now because we don't have access to Zephyros, it is unfortunate, but hey, that's uh, you know, we opened Flyback rather than uh, any of the other things we wanted to open, but hey, that's Yu-Gi-Oh sometimes. That is very unfortunate, but who knows, maybe with other hands we can uh, get you a better demonstration. So with Redoer, we can go ahead and um, we'll detach the re the uh, Emerald Bird, banish itself, and we can use uh, Emerald Bird's effect and uh, summon our Clido. And just send a another Yellow Martin. Just to not draw it next turn, and uh, you need to use uh, you need to declare the effect to add uh, the moment you banish Redoer. So you have to go effect to add uh, on end phase, and then on the end phase you can just go ahead and add your uh, Gamma. You know your Redoer comes back. This is set, of course. Uh, this guarantees you put a trap under it because you can attach a uh, Time Thief card under a Time Thief Xyz. That's pretty good. Um, we didn't get there, we didn't get to Perpetua, but hey, that's okay. Not every hand's perfect. Uh, that's not what this is all about. Alright guys, now let's talk about DD Crow. So with DD Crow, uh, essentially what you are doing, um, first off, before you can dis uh, before you have a plan of action, you need to decide, or you need to know what kind of targets that DD Crow is used against, um, against your deck in specific. Now, DD Crow is a highly played hand trap, unlike Ash Blossom and Effect Failure. So, what is DD Crow typically used against in Lumilite? Well, nine times out of ten, it is almost always going to be Yellow Martin. So, um, Reason being is because it wastes an effect of Tiger or uh, Perfume, and Martin can't use this effect um, because it's no longer in the graveyard. You know, that, that that's it. That's the reason. So, um, and so what do you do about that? Well, as to what I alluded to earlier, um, when it comes to playing through a lot of these hand traps, Serenade Dance is your best friend. So, we if we get access to it, we, that's great, but if we don't, we'll see what happens. So we do have access to uh, Serenade Dance. This is perfect. Mm. This is actually, this is one of those, this is a good hand actually. It's not an average hand, this is a good hand. But let's go ahead and show you exactly what I mean. So let's go ahead and add our Collider Chick. Okay. And let's summon our Collider Chick. This is one of those situations to where I don't want to waste the Tiger effect. I'd rather just send a, um, uh, I'd rather just activate Perfume. So we'll go ahead and send Martin to the graveyard. Now, uh, now once I go, oh man, actually, whew, I have Tiger in, in hand already, so let's, we can discard Tiger for Tiger, it's fine. So, if I go ahead and activate Perfume and target Yellow Martin, and they go, DD Crow, rip Martin. Rip me, right? Well, no, not really. What you can do from here, is you can activate Foolish Goods. This is why I like to hold Foolish Good and Tanky a lot. Uh, a lot of people are so hard pressed to activate their spells right away, but 
it makes him fall victim to a lot of hand traps that you otherwise wouldn't have had you just held onto it a little bit longer. Um, what you know, because these cards will bail you out uh, when you're getting hand trapped. So, um, let's go ahead and send Serenade Dance to our graveyard. Once again, Serenade Dance is your best friend. So, uh, with Serenade Dance, we are going to banish and we're going to discard our Luna Light Tiger to summon a second Kaleido Chick from the deck. And we are going to send a Yellow Martin to the graveyard. Or Emerald Bird. I think, hmm. If I send an Emerald Bird, what will this do for me? Um. Nah, let's, let's send Yellow Martin. So, we're back to square one, and now we have a second body on field to boot. So now let's go ahead and overlay for a four strikes. And search our Zephyros the Elite. Now we can use Perfume in our graveyard. So again, Serenade Dance, beautiful card, allows you to play through a lot of hand traps. Um, now we can search our Tiger. Alright. Um, now we can actually use Winder's Effect. We can detach off of four Strix and we can add ourselves a Retrograde. Having Retrograde is always nice because... Hey, look, Shadal Structure Deck is legal as of today. Who would have thought? So... Let's go ahead and link these bad boys off into a Cyframe Lambda. Alright. Now the fun begins. Let's go ahead and scale our Tiger for our Kaleido Chick. Uh, using Kaleido Chick's effect, we can finally send our Emerald Bird to the graveyard. Better late than never, but we got access to it. Uh, we can now, uh, again, be, er, well, the goal is to put four level fours on the field all at once. That is what you really want to do. Um, the reason being is because you really want um, to put Redoer and Perpetual on the field at the same time for a good reason that I'll show um, mm -hmm. in a minute. So we can use uh, Yellow Martin's effect now to balance Tiger. Alright, now we can scale Tiger and use Tiger's effect. And uh, we can actually summon a Luna Light Tiger from our graveyard and bounce this tiger for Zephyros the Elite. We'll take our 400 damage and scale this Lunar Light Tiger. The reason why I activated that, uh, see, there's a reason why I discarded Tiger because if you want to have access to two tigers, um, that's one way to do it. You could send a tiger and bring back tiger with tiger and bounce it so you can have two tigers for follow-ups. So it's really, it's a really nice interaction. So now we can use this tiger to summon Emerald Bird. So now both of our tigers have used their effects. Uh, so let's go ahead and overlay Emerald. Any, any exceed with Emerald Bird er, needs to be Redoer. Redoer has to have Emerald Bird underneath it. So let's go ahead and overlay these two into Time Thief Perpetua. So in this situation, you want, you can make a third rank four. Uh, the way we do this, we can use Perpetual right now to target Redoer before uh, you decide to use this effect. And we are going to specifically attach Time Thief Bezel Ship. Now we can use the effect of Redoer and you have to specifically detach Emerald Bird, otherwise uh, Emerald Bird won't get its effect and banish himself. So multiple things is happening. First off, Emerald Bird can now use its effect to summon a Lunar Light from the graveyard or from the Banish Pile. And you also need to trigger Lambda's effect to add a Psy Frame on End Phase. You have to use the effect immediately. It's not like an End Phase Scar. So, uh, summoning back our Banished uh, Yellow Martin. And we're using the effect to add on End Phase. Now we can use Bezel Ship's effect to detach from uh, Perpetua. And summon the Bezel Ship but it's banished when it leaves the field. Uh, now we can go ahead and overlay into a third rank four. Well, you can do multiple things here, actually. And I'll go over all of them. You could, you, you could summon a Abyss Dweller. Um, 
honestly, what I what my favorite thing to do uh, lately has been to make Evil Sword Nightmare because it is amazing against the mirror match. It's really good against spirals. Um, it's great against Salaman greats, but there are some other things you can do. Um, you can just you can make an IP Masquerina. Now what this allows you to do, so we're gonna go and set this and redoer. Let's say in phase redoer comes back, and we search our gem. Okay. Okay. So with uh, redoer's effect, depending on what you attach, depends on what you attach with Perpetua. But nine times out of ten, you're going to attach a flyback. Correct. Okay. So, um, but let's say you get a monster off redoer. So what you're often doing is you're going to gamma your opponent. Fair? You're going to gamma your opponent uh, during their turn. You know, summon. Cool. IP Masquerina effect. That's also cool. You know, you can... Um, I really want to make Avermax because it stops Lambda and Perpetua from getting ran over. Because a lot of folks want to run them over. Uh, but unfortunately, Avermax does require extra deck. Um... Otherwise, I would just use IP and just link these uh, IP and Lambda instead. But you can make Appaloosa for three. And what you can do at this point, you can banish Redoer and top deck a card. And use the effect of um, Lambda again to add on in phase. Since uh, this is in the graveyard, you have another Gamma in your hand on the in phase. Along with uh, Retrograde. And you still have uh, two Tigers for follow up and all that so it's little things like this that make you kind of just kind of think a little bit but again this just based on the inning board it just depends on the deck you're playing against again I'd rather just make evil storm nightmare because booking things down is very very powerful um, so that's it for that now let's go ahead and move on to Joel Lockbird. Alright guys, now on to everybody's uh, favorite card, Joel and Lockbird. Favorite card of the format, because uh, Spiral's a deck. Uh, I don't know if I've said this before, but uh, as much as I love Spirals, I absolutely despise formats where Joel and Lockbird sees main deck play or even side deck play, because that card is so strong and so oppressive, just stopping cards from searching and drawing is pretty obnoxious. And it's done turn zero, which makes it even faster than Colossus, so just, uh, I don't know, but uh, it, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate being denied the ability to access your deck at all, so, you know, that just being denied from accessing your deck is so powerful, but I don't know. But um, you would think Joel Lockbird can shut a deck like Lunalite down because you play things like uh, Perfume, uh, Tanky, uh, Four Strix, and things like that. You have Lambda Searches and stuff, but truth be told, there are some things you can do to play around this card, and that's what I'm here to show you. Uh, essentially, I mean, all you need is Chick Tiger. So if you have one, just you need to access the other. And look at that, you have Foolish Goods, so... I don't know what I told you guys, but with Foolish Goods, you want to hold on to it uh, if you can. Now, we have access to Chick Tiger uh, very, very uh, well. Um, there is a way to play around this, but if you activate the wrong card, your turn ends right here. So, um, this is where you need to be careful. This is where playing, um, executing your cards... Uh, oh, whew, whew, I was careful. Oh, that was close. This is where executing your cards correctly come into play. So, uh, the very first thing we're going to do is activate our Foolish Burial. That's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to send our Kaleido Chick to the graveyard. Now, if we had a Danger in hand, we would not dare activate it. So, Dangers are good, but they do prop, they do proc off Joel Lockbird very early. And that is something that I do struggle with um, regarding if, do I want to keep dangers and stuff because again just you want to play as few cards that lose to these cards as possible 
So let's go and activate our perfume for our Kaleido Chick. And we can use Collider Chick's effect to send a uh, Yellow Martin to the graveyard. Alright, now what we can do is we can activate our perfume and discard a card. We can discard our, I don't know, we can discard this, okay? Now we can add our Lunar Light Tiger to our hand. Now we're getting Droll and Lock -braided. We have, we cannot access our deck for basically the remainder of the turn. And that really sucks, but hey, you have Foolish Goods in hand, you decided to keep it uh, instead of activating it right away. I know a lot of you folks want to just activate Foolish Goods right away, but it's because of situations like this where, hey, if you do that and you get hit with the wrong hand trap, you kind of lose. So, yeah. This is the part where things get a little complicated. Let's go ahead and uh, Foolish Goods. And let's go ahead and send a card. Let's go ahead and send a, um, that Serenade Dance. Again, Serenade Dance is your best friend in a lot of scenarios. Serenade Dance will allow you to play through a lot of stuff. So let's go ahead and Tiger for a Yellow Martin. Um, no need to, uh, what is it? So, uh, yeah, no need to make four tricks because you can't search. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to make IP Mascarina instead. Um, no Lambda, no, no any, I mean, now if this was a Gamma, yes, you make Lambda. You make Lambda if this is a Gamma, obviously, but you know, we may not have that. So we're gonna go Yellow Martin Effect, we're gonna bounce, we're gonna Special, we're gonna activate Tiger, and we're gonna summon our Kaleido, and um, Kaleido's gonna send another card. Kaleido is going to send a, uh, we're, it, it's not gonna send Emerald Bird because we're gonna summon it with Serenade Dance. So we're gonna use Serenade Dance's effect, and discard the flyback. Sorry, not sorry. Or, I am sorry. But, hey, we're under Droll and Lockbird. We're out of our options, fam. So, we're gonna summon our Emerald Bird now. And we're gonna overlay these two. And we're gonna make our Type Thief Redoer. And we're gonna banish, or detach the Emerald Bird to banish itself using Emerald Bird's effect to summon out a Yellow Martin from the graveyard and overlay into a Time Thief Perpetua. Uh, where is it? So, now at this point, in phase, this comes back, and we can immediately use Perpetua on the in phase still, since it is a quick effect, and we can attach a retrograde. So, you're still looking at a couple of interruptions here, even under Droll and Lockbird. Uh, you're looking at a Redoer uh, spin, and depending on what you make with IP, uh, you can uh, and basically do a little bit more. So, uh, in situations like this, I would actually keep this on board and spin and not actually um, banish it because I would use IP and just, um, uh, what's it called, just use it as link material and, uh, you know, make unicorn, stuff like that and use uh, Perpetua and bring it back. So uh, yeah, that's it for that tutorial on Joel Lockbrain. All right guys, now for everybody's favorite card, Nibiru. So, the Rocky Boy himself, is he a match for Lunalite? Well, when it comes to games two and games three, you do need to play your combo differently. If you if you're trying to play around a beer, you need to specifically play a combo uh, dedicated to playing around a beer. So essentially, Curious is the way to go, and that's that's what I'm going to show you guys. So, uh, yeah, if we open basically just combo, I'll show you guys exactly how to do so. Oh, look at that, Chick Tiger and some dangers. Now. Typically, people don't Nibiru until you commit to something critical. 
Now, keep in mind here, you also have Gamma in your hand, so you could make Lambda and not fear Nibiru because you have it, but again, uh, I think I've said in these examples, uh, the hands I open Gamma, I'm not going to use it, so I can show you how to play through this stuff. How uh, you can just continue to play around this stuff. So, we're not even going to count the summons because nobody in Nibiru is on your fifth summon exactly. So, um, what we're going to do, I think we're actually going to send... Uh, a copy of actually no we're not gonna send anything right now we're not gonna send anything we're gonna start revealing dangers because we open uh, depending on what we draw into depends on what we actually need to send with uh, Kaleido so one two three four five six let's roll that dice oh I hit Ooh, Nessie's actually good to hit okay so let's summon our Jack Jaguar mini hey look at that we drew Emil Bird. Uh, so that's actually pretty fantastic. We can go Nessie Effect. And we can add a Mothman. So Emerald Bird is actually pretty crucial for... Um, for what you need to accomplish. Allowing you to play through Nibiru. So... With a Kaleido Chick, what we are going to do is we are going to send... A copy of... Yellow Martin to the Graveyard. All right. Uh, I don't think we're gonna use Tiger's Effect just yet, but um, let's see what we do. Let's go ahead and reveal Mothman because if we hit this, or if we uh, if we if we summon the Mothman, then we either discard Gamma or Emerald Bird. If we discard Emerald Bird, that's even better. But if not, whatever. So we're gonna reveal the Mothman. And if we hit the Mothman, we'll just discard the Emerald Bird anyway. Okay, th three. So we hit the middle card. So it's unfortunate Emerald Bird does stay in our hand. So that is unfortunate. But hey, what are we going to do about it, right? So we have this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make four tricks. I think, yeah, we still normal summon Kaleido Chick too. So uh, let's go ahead. And go for Strix effect. We are going to detach our Kaleido chick. And we are going to search a Zephyros the Elite. Now we don't have too many uh, discard outlets here. So the next card we summon, the next card uh, needs to be Emerald Bird. And I'll go ahead and show you guys exactly how we're going to do that. So we're going to use Lunar Light Tiger's effect first. And we're going to summon our Kaleido chick. Alright. Now we're going to link three. And we're going to make a curious. Now, think of it now, think of it this way. Uh, I'll go and show you exactly what we would have sent if we did not draw Emerald Bird. So we're gonna make Curious, and we're going to send a Lunar Light perfume to the graveyard. Okay? Now we're gonna mill three. It's fine. Hey look, Tom Thief Winder's in there. You can bring it back with Degaris later. Alright. So now with Lunar Light Perfume, we are just going to go boom. Uh, send our Emerald Bird and add Lunar Light Tiger. Okay. We oh shoot, hold on. Hold on, what the hold on. What I should have done, hold on. This is the important part. Before we had made Curious, we still had um, four Strix and a uh, Jackalope. When we had summoned the Kaleido Chick, I forgot one very, very crucial step. You need to use Kaleido Chick's effect to send Lunar Light Tiger to the graveyard. This is a very, very important uh, part to playing through Nibir. You need to make sure Tiger is in the graveyard. So. Now that we're done not uh now that we're done making misplays, we can go ahead and continue. So this is now we're all good and we're all set up. So let's go ahead and scale our Lunalite Tiger. And using Tiger's effect, we can summon our Emerald Bird. So now your opponent has a very, very important decision to make. They can because if they don't Nibiru you here, we can just go straight into an Appalooza. Just like that, 
and we're good to go. So, what happens if they do Nibiru? Where is it? Um, go put the Curious back. There you go. So, what happens if they do Nibiru? So, they go, reveal Nibiru. These two cards get tributed. Okay? And a token gets summoned to your field. Whatever. So, what happened? These getting tributed were card effect. They were not cost. They're not Kaiju's. They're not Spear Mode. So, both of these effects are going to activate. So, Curious's effect can grab any card from your graveyard to your hand. That includes another Lunar Light Tiger. But, this is assuming we didn't send um, a perfume to the graveyard. But also, Emerald Bird also summons a Lunar Light from your, um, it summons a Luna card. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab, we can grab any card. So um, we're going to summon our Kaleido Chick from our graveyard with Emerald Bird and with Curious. Now let me show you. If Emerald Bird did not get drawn, what we would have set with Curious was going to be Serenade Dance. Reason being, you go Curious, send Serenade Dance, you go Effect to Curious to Mill 3, Chain Serenade Dance, you summon this, you Mill 3, that puts your opponent in an awkward position, and so this wouldn't be here, because instead of sending Perfume, again, you send Serenade Dance, and the Tiger, the second Tiger would have been sent with Kaleido Chick, and Emerald Bird would have got this back to hand from the graveyard, or no, Curious would have got this back from grave to hand, instead of basically anything I want. Now, I think I do want to grab Time Thief Winder. Um, even though, uh, I don't know, there's not too many ways to discard. Yeah, I want to make Degar, hold on, do, do, do you have to detach two materials? Or just all of its materials? Yeah, you have to detach two materials. Um, yeah, we're gonna grab wine. Yeah, we're gonna grab winder for sure for sure. We're gonna grab winder mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do From now now we have a token. We have a collider chick now. We can just go link link and Do things we can make a Either a IP masquerina or a cyframe lambda uh, ooh, Yep, we have to make an IP masquerina So now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to... Did I use this? I scaled it and I brought it back. Yes, so these both have been used. So we're going to use Yellow Martin's effect since it did not get used. Alright, now what we're going to do is rescale the Tiger and use the effect for Glido. This has already used its effect, so there's no point. So we're going to overlay. Mm -hmm into a Dugaris, the Timeless. And we're gonna use the effect, and we're gonna detach, we're gonna draw two. And we're gonna discard one. We're gonna discard the Zephyros, and we're gonna bounce for Zephyros. We're gonna take the four, we're gonna scale the Tiger, and we're gonna bring back another Luna card. And we're gonna overlay. Um, oh, do I wanna overlay? Yeah, I want to overlay. We're going to overlay into a Time Thief Redoer. We're going to reveal Time Thief Winder in hand. And detach a material off Redoer to summon. And we're going to use a redo uh, Winder's effect to add a Retrograde from deck to hand. Okay? Alright, now from here we can link off... I do want to make Perpetua though. I well we'll see. Let's let's see what we hit. Let's see what we hit and let's see what we draw. We're gonna go Mothman effect. Let's do it. RNG boys, RNG. Uh two, four, six. Uh six. Hey look at that! We don't need that driver in our hand anyway. Summon draw. Hey look at that, tanky, but our tigers are full. So there's not too much we can do there. There's not a Beast Warrior we can just special summon. So, we're just going to set our Retrograde. And we're going to link uh, these two off. We'll keep the extra monster for IP. 
um, that's still pretty beneficial. So let's go and link these off for a Cypher and Lambda. Now let's use Redoer's effect to banish himself. Effect to add on in phase. So in phase, this gets added. This comes back. Just keep that out of the zone, I guess. And look, you have Lambda for Gamma. You still have Redoer. You have um, Retrograde for a generic negate that you may need. You have IP Mask Arena to link these off into an Appalooza 4. Or you can make an Avermax and all that. Whatever you may need, it doesn't matter. Um, you play through the Rocky Boy. That's all that matters. You play through Rocky Boy. Uh, playing through the Rock is really no problem. Uh, you just need to know how to pilot uh, your combo. So, with Nibiru, all you need to do is make sure three steps. One, you need to access Kiri. Or one, step number one, I'm all over the place. I'm sorry, guys. Step number one, you need to make sure Kaleido Chick sends Lunar Light Tiger to the graveyard because that is typically going to be the card you get back with Curious. Step number two, you need to make Curious and send Serenade Dance to the graveyard to summon Emerald Bird for when it's time for your opponent to Nibiru. Uh, you get two cards to your hand. Uh, one being a tiger and one being er, a monster to field and all that and you're still good to go that's all you need to do you know make your curious in your serenade dance summon your kaleido chick and make sure you get access to lunar like tiger to your graveyard that is it all right guys i know i did say there was one more combo regarding playing through lancia but Something tells me this video is going to be ridiculously long, but again, I still feel like this was uh, definitely going to be needed for educational purposes. Um, for a lot of people to just learn how to play through this stuff. Again, you don't need Call by the Grid, you just need to know how to play your combos right. You need to know when and when not to play things. Um, you know, just all that stuff. Now, this deck is not perfect. I will go and let you know one thing right now. Um, this deck doesn't may not lose to hand traps, but it loses to a lot of spells and traps um, Games two and three meaning what I, what I mean it loses to things like dark ruler no more It loses to cards like evenly matched. It loses to lightning storm uh, Imperm on your IP or your um, or your lambda it loses to probably even dark hole and regeki it, it, it loses to a lot of just anything that deals with your board that's a spell or a trap that's what this deck loses to and honestly I think we may if, if you want to adapt to that I, I think you should find space for Utopia double package and all that with the double or nothing Utopia Kaiser with a Kaliuga games two and three I feel like if you really um, don't want to lose to that um instead of things like loom of the dark spirit you know keep the phantom knights in your deck so you have search targets um cards to search this uh for games two and three because people well, like lunar light players were already playing like three judgments and things like that we're already playing like other things to stop ourselves from losing to spells and traps because that is what kills this deck it's not the hand traps it's the spells and traps so I don't know, I might figure out a way to incorporate this in the main deck, but this definitely won't be my go-to option because it's a lot more vulnerable to cards like Joel and Lockbird and things like that. But, you know, there needs to be a, a first, you know, surefire way not to lose the spells and trap cards. So, guys, this was very, very long, but I'm not even sure if I plan on doing something like this again. But again, uh, Sir Eminon, if you watch this video, uh, let me know what your feedback is, and uh, as anybody else, let me know what you guys' feedback are, and uh, I will get back with you guys in another video. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Jay Money, and I am signing out.